This week's episode of Nudgy Rugby Review is brought to you by Bank of Queensland Kipper Ring, Springer's Solar, Storage Choice, and the Nudgy Rugby Support Group. On tonight's episode, the GPS competition is officially underway with a visit to our greatest traditional rivals, Gregory Terrace. We go around the grounds with our widest selection of games yet, including the seconds, 14Bs, 16As and 12Bs. And our team in focus looks at the under 13As and how they must pick themselves up from a heavy defeat on the weekend. And we have match highlights from the main game on International Oval. Tonight on Nudgy Rugby Review. Hi, I'm Emily Laird and welcome to Nudgy Rugby Review. Last Saturday saw the official start of the 2020 GPS Rugby Competition as Nudgy ventured out to Tennyson to take on the best of Gregory Terrace. Here's a look at the main game coverage. on the left hand side going into Alakai finding the left wing on the left hand right side of the park and that's first try this afternoon early points to Nudgy Nasa Nasa pumping his legs takes four defenders with him finds a running Bishop 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 gets inches away arm goes up again looking around hands in the air try time Wow, oh, good defensive read. And there's a try to Nudgy. Wonderful kick there from Delacourt. Well weighted kick. Harrison Anoa finding Vehu. Vehu with a left foot step. He beats a couple. He comes back this way. He beats three. Vehu. Right foot step, left foot step. Inside out, David Vehu. Will Jones comes straight in. Straight at the defensive line. Riccio. Over the top from Smith. Finds that winger. It's the second rower, Harvey. He's been likely down that right hand side of the park all day. And Tungan gets a little bit of a pass out. That's Vehu. Vehu with a bit of pace. Outside left hand winger. This could be a try coming up. There's defensive line. And it's going to be a try. Campbell King scores. Wow. Short little pass back to James again. James close to the try line. That's it right there. You can see the yeah, post. Toya. Yeah, Robert Toya. Well, they changed it up, didn't they? And they got a, a big rampaging Toya to score. Jason, the upright. Yep. Lucky takes a quick tap. The, the skipper. Finds the right hand side. Hancock. Little numbers here. Right foot, left foot step. Could that be a try? Referee's right on the spot. A try. Wow. Campbell King, we've got that there one right. Go. The ball gets back. Off this play here, forwards off blue, this one. Full time. It's described as the battle of the colours, as these two teams took to the field over a hundred years ago to decide who got to keep the blue and white butcher's hoops. 
And even today, across both programs, the rivalry remains fierce and respectful. Yeah, look, it's great. It's obviously been going for over, you know, 130 years. You've got a lot of good friends and associates at Gregory Terrace, so it's great to be here today. It's very special because there's been a rivalry through, like, since we started at Nudgee. And just good to get beat your mates from different schools. So you know some of the boys in the yeah. Gregory Terrace team? Yeah. And what's that like? Do they give you a little bit of slack before the game? Yeah, they do, and it's good to beat them at the end. The rivalry is uh, full of passion, full of mates against mates, because a lot of them have gone to school together in the past, and... Um, yeah, it's great. You, you don't, you, I don't see it in any other sort of schoolboy level. Every year it's a massive, massive um, contest in aggression and you know, it's always a hard game. Always love it. Yeah, all the boys get around a lot more than just like a normal game. Yeah, they always come out to play straight away, so it always makes the game a bit closer, a bit more exhilarating, a bit of harder hits, I guess. It means a lot to the, all the boys, I reckon. Um, you know, it's pretty... I wouldn't want to be terrorist today. Can you tell me anything about the Battle of the Colours? Um, there was a game... A lot of years ago, for the colours of the blue and white, and Nudgee came out on top. Do you think it's a myth or the truth? Um, I like to think it's the truth. Well, my dad used to go here to tell me lots of stories about there was a game where um, Nudgee and Terrace uh, versed each other for the blue and white strafes, and obviously we won. Yeah, so it date back, dates back to Nudgee branching from Terrace, being Nudgee being a boarding school and Terrace obviously being a day school. Um, obviously, there's a bit of folklore about it. Nudgy stealing Terrace's colours and whatnot. The battle of the colours, so first of all, there was. No, I actually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> With the contrasting colours of both schools armed for battle, let's take a look around the grounds. For a lot of the boys in our team, because they're in year, in year 12, uh, it's a, it was their last hit out against Terrace. Um, so it's pretty special for a lot of those boys, and especially keeping Terrace to nil. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a pretty great weekend. So defensively with our team, uh, we, we're really strong. So there were definitely there weren't, weren't many line breaks from Terrace. And uh, yeah, we were just, just holding them out, especially when we were stuck in our line for a few, uh, few minutes. It was uh, definitely a really, really good show from the boys. I mean, something we aim for is just to lead the jersey in a better place than we had it. The boys just don't want to let down their school at the end of the day. It's really a great time to play for Nudge. We could tell from the start that it was pretty one side from the first try. Like our attack and our structure was much better than Terrace's. Uh, and our defence was just perfect from the start. Like a few tries from the bat just gave us a lot more confidence and that we just kept scoring tries. We knew they weren't going to be the same team as last week, so we were a bit nervous to see if they changed. We didn't get cocky at all, played our normal game and did better than like, the week before. Our attack's been great, like our structure, like all our blues and whites and our backline moves have been all good.
It's time for Team in Focus, and this week we're going to take a step back and have a look at how the 13 A's are handling the physically combative nature of high school rugby. The 13 A's had a tough outing against Gregory Terrace on Saturday. Injuries and loss of continuity playing their role in a heavy defeat. Uh, it was a little bit disappointing. Um, from the get-go, I don't think we were ready uh, for the intensity that Terrace came out with. Um, we talked about it all week, about having some intensity, especially because it was Terrace week and it means that much to Nudgy boys. But um, yeah, we just didn't show it from the get-go and we were on the back foot from the start and it's really hard to sort of get on the front foot after being so far behind. Uh, that They didn't give in, so our best passage of play was in the last 10 minutes. So. Um, the fact that they were up against the wall for 30 or 40 or 35 minutes um, and the last 10 minutes was their best passage sort of shows to me that there's a little bit of grit and character in that age group, so I'm pretty happy about that still. A bit disappointed on everyone's behalf. I feel like the main thing of that game was there was no intensity from the get-go. They just came straight through and they just kept rolling through. And I feel like that was fairly disappointing from the first game of the season. In that last like 10 minutes of that passage, I feel like if we had that the whole game, it would have been a lot more tighter and everyone lifted. If we start that bad, I'm going to make sure that everyone's fired up and we don't have that negativity in our mind from this week and we don't just let them run over us because that's what they did today. The GPS schedule moves quickly and the squad has very little time to reflect as training steps up a gear. We are all pretty honest this morning at our training session that the weekend's performance was disappointing. Um, you know, it's never fun to lose to Terrace, but to lose to them by such a significant margin was really disappointing. Uh, we're not going to let that get us down. I think we just need to work on our contact, and we did a big contact block this morning. Uh, just looking at our work around the breakdown, because I think they were pretty quick to isolate us and steal ball off us. Uh, the other things we've been working on are just trying to limit our loose carries and really look to get a dominant carry in to get over the advantage line and then use our speedsters out wide, because we've got a lot of uh, a lot of speed to burn out there and unfortunately on the weekend we couldn't find them. It's really exciting coaching the under 13s because obviously you know in years to come they'll grow into being the first 15 of the future. Uh, there's a lot of raw talent in our age group and you know a lot of boys starting to formulate that rugby IQ which is really exciting to see as well. So some of the challenges I guess are looking at having that rugby knowledge and that previous experience to patterns of play. I think we're still kind of coming together as a team in that sense and you know trying to harness that raw talent and come together to you know reach the goal that we want of a, for a full performance. Yeah look it'd be nice to win a few more games than we are at the moment but look realistically what we're trying to do is create growth in the rugby program so the results of our coaching might not be seen this year, but hopefully what will happen is, you know, next year we'll start to see that improvement in 14s, 15s, and the ultimate goal is to produce a really good first 15, you know, three or four years down the track. Hi, my name's Michael Agnew, and I'm the owner-manager of BAQ, G-Bung and Kippering. As a nudgy old boy, myself and the teams of BAQ, Kippering and G-Bung are proud sponsors of Nudgy Rugby and wanted to let you know about a limited time offer. If you're looking for a reason to switch your home loan, BAQ are offering you two and a half thousand of them. Refinance your home loan to an eligible BAQ home loan by the 26th of September and settle by the 12th of December 2020 and you'll get two and a half thousand dollars cash back. Pop in to BAQ Kippering or G-Bung and chat to myself or one of the team to make that switch today. We hope everyone stays safe in this time and we look forward to seeing you all in action. I was really happy with our performance and I think the coaches were as well. Um, just our defence in the first half really set the tone for the rest of the game. Especially it allowed us to move the ball around freely and play eyes up footy, which we like to do. They really come at us for the first 10 minutes and I think we knew that, we were prepared for that. We keep making some easy errors that we can fix I think, just catching the ball and off kickoffs especially, we've been dropping a lot of balls off kickoffs. So I think just completing in our own half will make a big difference. In 
the first half we were like down a bit, did so many knock-ons and gave away like like five or ten penalties, like way too many. We were losing then, half-time the coach gave us, gave us a spray and we like played way better in the second half and like just dug deep and yeah. They were really motivated, like in the ruck they just always got over the ball and always like gave us like a run for our money, like in the rucks. I'm um, probably holding the ball hard at stronger carries and stuff like that. That would be really good. Whenever we versed Terrace, we expected tough team because they're like much bigger than us. Things we probably could have done better would be our speed to the breakdowns um, and we would have retained more ball possession. And we also could have spread it out to the outside backs because that's where our speed is and there was lots of opportunities for tries out there because they were really bunched up Terrace. They were also really big, which our forwards weren't as big as them, but we probably could improve on team spirit and we could encourage each other a bit more. Do you need your weekly fix of rugby action this winter? Nudgy Rugby YouTube for features, documentaries, rugby skills, interviews and much, much more. New content is released each week, including a brand new Nudgy Rugby review show and game day live every home day. Nudgy Rugby YouTube, your one-stop shop for all your rugby content. Please subscribe and like below. That's all we have time for this week. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure you tune in to our live game day show at 2.40pm next Saturday as Nudgee hosts their first GPS home game against Ipswich Grammar School to kick off at 3.15. See you then. This week's episode of Nudgy Rugby Review is brought to you by Bank of Queensland Kipper Ring, Springer's Solar, Storage Choice, and the Nudgy Rugby Support Group. <laughs>